Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome. Today, we have Steve Hooper, the president of financial services with Tip House and formerly of Ethan Stoll Restaurants, and Patrick Yearout from Ivers. He is the senior Innov innovation and recruitment director, and they are going to talk about Tip House and tip automation. Uh, but before we get to that, I have a little bit of housekeeping to get to. Uh, we have two webinars coming up in the next couple of weeks. Next week at 10 a.m. on May 22nd, we're going to hear from some folks at Parker Smith & Beak and My Hospitality Insurance who are talking about crime insurance and policies to help reduce crime in your area. And then on June 12th at 10 a.m., we the folks will from Odessa will be on talking about their new lending program. Both of those you can find on our website if you would like to attend and register. Um, today's uh, webinar will be recorded and we will be up on our web our website later on this afternoon, along with the three uh, PowerPoint slides that we're going to show during this, which will have links to uh, Steve and Patrick's linked out profile LinkedIn profiles and. <laughs> <laughs> also the link to tip house on our website and with that i'm going to go ahead and get started and introduce steve and patrick good morning good morning good morning uh why don't the two of you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself your background and give us a fun fact about yourself patrick you go first Thank you. Uh, well, I work for Ivers Restaurants. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with Ivers, we've been around since 1938, and we are a seafood concept, and we have both full-service and quick-service seafood. We also operate some stands at local sports stadiums, and then we have the Ivers Soup Company, which uh, manufactures the uh, chowder and soups we sell in our restaurants, but we also sell them to other restaurants, grocery stores, Sam's Club, Costco, all across the United States. So we do a little bit of everything when it comes to the restaurant industry. And I have personally been in the restaurant industry for 32 years. Uh, I started uh, at a sandwich shop um, uh, working with a friend of mine, and we did that for about seven years. And then I have been at Ivers now for 25 years. Well, almost 25 years. 25 years next month will be my uh, anniversary date. And so very happy to be here today. Thank you. I, uh, Steve Hooper, uh, currently the president of financial services uh, here at Tip House. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll insert my fun fact into the middle. Uh, I'm not just the president of Tip House, uh, but I was also a customer. So uh, up until about this time last year, I was the president of Ethan Stoll Restaurants. I did that for a, a few years and uh, had the opportunity to work with the Tip House team uh, as a customer on that side uh, across a, a variety of different restaurants from our, our kind of fast casual counter service pizza locations all the way up to our kind of higher end uh, uh, experiences like How to Cook a Wolf and, and Staple and Fancy and everything in between. And so I uh, had a lot of, of good experiences with all of that. So yes, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm doing technology stuff now, but uh, I'm, I'm, restaurants are, are my heart and uh, being able to help them day in and day out is a, a, a great joy these days. All right. Well, let's get started. Today's format is going to be a little bit different than what our members are used to. What we are going to do today is we're going to have a little Q&A with Patrick and Steve. I will ask them some questions. And when we're done, you can go ahead and type any questions that you might have in the Q&A section on the bottom of your screen, and we can answer those live. Um, so let's go ahead and dig into this. Um, Steve, what's the history of tipping at your restaurant or in your business? And Patrick, you can answer when he's done. Great. Yeah. So, you know, obviously uh, tips are a big part of the restaurant industry at all levels, particularly these days. Uh, and so um, we utilized uh, two different kinds of tip pools uh, at ESR while I was there. Um, at counter service, uh, we were kind of a, a whole house tip pool based on hours worked. There weren't really uh, uh, big differentiations. Um, but in our first full service restaurants, we had a pretty complicated tipping structure uh, that was utilized to sort of differentiate between levels and roles within the restaurant. So for example, uh, the front of house was 60% of the tip pool uh, and the back of house was 40%. And within the back of house, you know, we would allocate uh, different point levels to the different levels you had in your restaurant. So it was a fairly complicated 
uh, calculation. And the, you know, all of that was done outside of any actual software. We were doing all the calculations using Excel or, or Google Sheets. You know, there were issues with time punches and all that kind of stuff. So we, we had, it was, you know, a fair amount of manual labor uh, to sort of manage all of those tips and the calculations and making sure they were right for uh, getting into payroll and onto paychecks. So that's kind of how tipping kind of worked uh, for a number of years at, at, at ESR. And at Ivers, we've, you know, in uh, at least in our full service restaurants, we've had tipping since the beginning. Um, you know, we've always done tipping in full service, except for a two year period about a decade ago where we tried all in pricing. Um, the employees were okay with it. The guests did not like it. So we reverted back to the tipping model that we have now. Um, and right now in full service, it's, it's uh, you know, it's a tip out uh, uh, where the servers and the, all the different servers uh, in the dining room, the deck, the bartenders uh, tip out the other employees, including the bussers, the hosts, and the expos and the, the kitchen staff as well. And then in quick service, we never, we didn't do tipping until about a year and a half ago. We started right at the beginning of 2023 and we started with tip house. So we don't have any experience in quick service outside of tip house because tip house is what made that possible in our quick service locations. Um, similar to what Steve was saying, it was previously a very labor heavy um, task in, in quick, in full service. And we just didn't have the manpower in, in quick service to make that possible. And so we had to start with a, a, a tip tool like tip house to make it, to make it work. I asked you this earlier, did you find that that helps with your retention and quick service to actually having tips? Uh, well, definitely uh, in the past year, the number of employees that we've had to hire is down 31% from the year before we had tipping and quick service. So uh, I think it's definitely made an impression on, on our people. You're muted. I am, thank you so much. Uh, Patrick, why don't you go ahead and start with this one? Um, how did you historically manage the tips and tips, tip distribution for your teams and who was responsible for those calculations? Well, in full service, back in the old days, uh, you know, many, many years ago, most of our transactions were in cash. Um, you know, the guests would would pay in cash, they would leave their tips in cash, and then the servers would go home each night with the cash. And so there wasn't really a lot of, you know, uh, uh, work involved. Uh, the challenge became when uh, more and more of our guests started to pay with credit cards and, you know, credit cards became the more prevalent form of, of paying for these transactions. And when we got to that point, uh, there wasn't as much cash on hand. And so the managers had to do a lot of work to reconcile, to make sure everybody was getting the right amount of money, make sure it matched up with the POS. And oftentimes they'd have to cut checks at the end of the night to pay the servers their tips. And so it became a lot of work for the managers. And then about 12 years ago, we moved to integrating all of our tips into the payroll system because we were just getting so many you know, credit card payments. It worked out to be easier that way on a nightly basis. But then on a weekly basis, we had to do everything that Steve was mentioning before. You know, We had to go through all the reconciling uh, for the managers and the, and the uh, bookkeepers in the restaurants. And so it was a lot of work, uh, a very messy journey <laughs> um, to get there through, through full service. Steve? Yeah, so um, the, the kind of the process uh, internally, uh, we obviously had the uh, point of sale system with all the, uh, we used, utilized Toast with all the clock in and clock out information um, and all the, you know, the wage data uh, as well uh, that lived in both Toast and, and, and ADP, which was our, our, the payroll roll platform. And uh, there were daily uh, sheets that needed to be filled out by the managers uh, and to ensure that we captured all the, the data about who was working and, and didn't miss any punches and all of that kind of stuff. So there was a lot of audit trail that had to happen. Uh, so uh, towards the end, uh, in 2022, when we uh, were working with the Tip House platform and starting to work on implementing it, at that time, we had two folks in payroll uh, that were working on uh, on this. And what uh, I did a little time work study that sort of showed how much time our team was working on uh, on 
tips uh, or on all of the, the parts of their job. And I, what I found was that the two payroll folks were spending about a day and a half, two days a week each working on the tip spreadsheets or dealing with tips or emailing, you know, the managers to follow up on something or getting somebody's punch it punches correct. Like there were just so many touch points and so much manual work that needed to occur that it was, it was burning up three to four days of people time. Uh, and once the, the tip house platform was implemented, it just automated so much of that process. It simplified so, so many things for us. So what, what we were able to do was actually just reallocate some of that uh that work to you know that time to other other tasks and and uh, we were able to remove the daily tip sheets that the managers had to fill out and that was, became a, a thing of the past so the managers were really excited about that change because that was a, a weekly task and sometimes they'd have to do work like on vacation or their day off because it was required to get in on monday so that payroll could be run you know on wednesday right like all of those uh uh you know, intricacies and, and, and dependencies that are required to get payroll out every week. So that was, that was a, a complicating factor. And you know, we did pay um, all of our tips on payroll. That was just part and parcel. And all of it's because of what Patrick said, right? Everything is paid out on credit card these days for the most part, you know, data coming from the tip house side. We know that 94% of all tips are paid on credit card these days. That just does not leave enough cash in the restaurant. And, you know, it creates all kinds of headaches having to actually bring cash in in order to tip people out if you want to continue continue with that model. So uh, that's kind of how the process worked uh, uh, previously was just it was a lot of manual time of managers and, and the payroll team to to complete the calculations. Ooh. Muted again. I thought I hit that one. <laughs> Okay, Steve, how have you structured your tip pools and sharing historically? And what goals do you attempt to achieve by structuring those tip pools? Yeah, I mean, the, the model that we were utilizing back uh, back then uh, while I was still involved at ESR was, was really to develop sort of a team, a sense of team dynamic to, you know, we're all in this together. Uh, we're all working hard. You know, if the food is not as good or slow coming out, then the server's you know, can't turn the tables or deliver the level of service that they want to. And if the servers aren't, you know, delivering on their end, then, you know, it, you know, the kitchen can't do what they need to do well. And so it was, it was really uh, the, a mental model of, of supporting uh, that team whole house dynamic, right? Breaking down that front of house, back of house wall and in, in all of our, all, all of our full service locations. I thought, you know, for the most part, it was it was fairly successful. Um, the other thing that we utilized it for was, you know, with you know where minimum wage has been in our state over the last you know, 10 years in particular, um, became harder and harder to have different rage, wages in the front and back of the house. And so we leveraged the, the tip pool to create some of that differentiation in roles where, you know, a sous chef would get a three share and a, a line cook would get a two share and a dishwasher would get a one share. So you kind of had different you ended up with different pay at the end of each pay period, but it mostly came out of the tip pool. So there were two kind of competing uh, uh, interests that we were trying to accomplish utilizing our tip structure. Um, and that's what led to a lot of the complications for us. Patrick? Uh, my answer would be very similar to what Steve was saying in, in our full service locations. You know, we do have the tip out structure so that everybody is sharing in the in the benefit of the tipping, um, you know, you could say that the server is, uh, you know, the face of the restaurant in most cases because they're the one interacting with the guests, but they're certainly not the only person that guarantees an exceptional or memorable dining experience. You know, the food has to be uh, uh, prepped and cooked and plated correctly. Uh, it has to be, you know, the, the restaurant has to be clean. Uh, the hosts have to manage the, the flow of the restaurant. Everybody's working together to create these great dining experiences. And so that's why we feel like sharing the tips among everybody is is really important. And then in our quick service locations, it's, it is a tip pool. And then everybody, well, every employee, not the managers, but every employee shares equally based on how many hours they work that week and the tips that come in. And uh, for... For most of them in 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 quick service, uh, depending on the time of the year and and uh, you know uh, what restaurant they're in, how busy it is, they're getting an extra 
eight to fourteen dollars an hour because of the the tip pool in our quick service locations. All right, Patrick, how have things changed for Ivers and later Steve? Ethan stole restaurants since implementing a tip automation automation solution. Well, in quick service, it, it made it possible, as I said before, you know, we just didn't have the manpower to do all the tasks that were involved with, you know, manual tip calculation. So we we wouldn't have had we wouldn't have tipping in quick service without tip automation through uh, tip house. And in full service, as, as Steve was saying, it just it takes all those tasks, all those manual tasks, all those pieces of paper and spreadsheets and, you know, relegates them to the past. If I could give a comparison for um, uh, another part of the uh, part of the, the daily routine that would be scheduling. You know, I know a lot of managers have old school ways of doing scheduling and they do it all on paper or on a spreadsheet and print it out. And it's a it's a very labor intensive process. And then you find a tool like, you know, hot schedules or something, and it's everything's suddenly automated and integrated and communicated out to the team. And and you realize as a manager, you don't have to spend half your week doing the schedule. And so uh, it's, yeah, it's gen genuinely changed a lot for our restaurants. Yeah, and uh, I'd say there, there are kind of two parts uh, to that. I, as I mentioned before, uh, significantly decreased the workload uh, for the, the payroll team in particular and, and took uh, work off of the managers having to you know, manage things and, and double check things and whatnot. You know, as long as the time punches were correct all week, there was very little work for anybody to do. Uh, yeah. uh, once once the tip automation, uh, once the tip house solution was fully fully implemented, um, so that you know you know that became the main task for the manager was just making sure punch you know, punches were correct and you know and whatnot. Um, and I think you know removing work from uh, managers just gives them more time to spend on team and training and guest experience and, and all the things that they should be focused on as opposed to, you know, all the back office tasks that we've loaded them up with over the years because, you know, of all of these, these different things. I guess the other thing uh, uh, I'd say is that the um, improvements uh, in the automation and, and the, uh, you know, consistency of the calculations and the fact it's not in a spreadsheet, which is inherently a little fallible, meant there were there were fewer errors. So, you know, at least once, sometimes twice a year, there would be some miscalculation or something that would get, you know, copy and pasted incorrectly into the Excel spreadsheet. And some people would get overpaid in that restaurant and some people would get underpaid. And so like those those errors, they cost money uh, and time and you know, having to cut checks and that kind of thing. So it'd be kind of, while errors, you know, like with anything, errors are possible. Um, it significantly reduced the chance of, of, of a human error uh, that could could cause, you know, some, in some cases, multi-thousand dollar mistakes that uh, that we would have to eat as a, as a restaurant group. So those kinds of things just sort of start going away, which are you know, benefits that are you know, a little bit soft cost. There, there aren't things you're thinking about when you're uh, thinking about implementing something like this, but do do have an impact on your bottom line at the end of the year. How has this changed the employee experience? Steve, let's start with you. Sure. Um, so uh, at ESR, we uh, had not rolled out the uh, employee app uh, yet. And so I'll, I'll kind of put it on to the, um, you know, what we've seen on the tip house side from the you know, thousands of restaurants across the country that have. Um, and what we're seeing is the transparency of the employee app is huge for employees and employers. They know exactly what they made yesterday and they can see it in real time. They don't have to go ask their manager or payroll or, or that kind of thing for, and that transparency of, of what they're going to earn on the, on the tips brings them a lot of confidence. Um, and, you know, we can, we can talk briefly about it uh, uh, later, but uh, the second piece of that is uh, employees, once they see their tips every day, sometimes start asking to have them paid out again. Uh, and, you know, much like Patrick was saying back in the early days of, of Ivers, uh, it was all cash going out the door and you'd walk out with a, a lot of cash in your pocket. Well, that's not possible with all the credit cards. And so it was actually employees of the restaurants that were on tip house that were seeing their tips in their app, um, that were, uh, pushing to say, well, why can't I get paid those? And so the, the team at tip house went to work developing the earned tip access product to actually allow for it to be paid out every day digitally. 
Uh, and so it, it's, it's been a, a great success and a, a great opportunity to get daily pay into the hands of employees that, you know, honestly, they've got chances to work at Uber or DoorDash or, you know, other platforms that can pay every day. And so this is a way to sort of combat some of that daily pay pressure and, and sort of make the job a little stickier uh, for employees that, you know, otherwise could work at places that do pay daily. Hey, Patrick. Same question. Um, ditto. No. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I, I think everything that Steve was saying, you know, applies to us as well. The, the transparency, the reduction of errors, the reduction of tasks that are involved for the management team so that they can spend more time with their team members doing the things that they need to do, training and, you know, making sure that the experience is great for the guests. Um, you know, I, I think so far it's been very positive from from everybody. And, and I keep going back to uh, quick service, but you know, it again, Tip House made that possible in, in quick service. So all of our employees who are now earning that extra eight to fourteen dollars an hour, um, you know, seem to be very happy <laughs> that that money is coming in, uh, you know, above and beyond what they earn uh, uh, on their paychecks. So, what kind of employee feedback have you received after implementing this? Patrick? Oh, you know, again, very positive. Uh, uh, they, they seem to like the system. And um, uh, for all the reasons that we just mentioned, the, the transparency, the reduction of errors, all, all of that is is a, a very positive uh, step forward for us in, in the tip house or in the, you know, in the tipping arena. Again, we in full service, we had a very messy journey to get there. And so to to not have to worry about all those things that we worried about in the past, that that's very helpful and uh, well liked by the employees. Steve, yeah, and I, I think you know, uh, in some ways, the entire uh, process was a little bit um, uh, hidden from the majority of the employees at ESR because we hadn't rolled out the 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 app yet. But you know, from a manager and payroll team and uh, accounting perspective, it simplified so many things for for everybody that that kind of touched. The tip calculations in that process. So it was a significant improvement on workflow and, and reduction and uh, sort of effort on that particular task. And can you share any tips or strategies for effectively communicating the benefits of tip automation to your staff members and gaining their buy-in? Steve, let's start with you. Uh, yeah, so what, what we've seen be successful uh, across, you know, I think we're, I don't know, 3,000, 3,200 locations, something like that across the country that have rolled out tip house uh, at this point. And what we've seen uh, work well is sort of working closely with a, a few employees that understand uh, a little bit or are a little more bought in uh, and helping them, you know, maybe rolling out the app to them first so they get to see it and then they start talking to their team members and it sort of becomes this sort of natural progression within within the restaurant that actually helps um, see the see the benefits of, of, of what it can do. Um, so that's that's been the most sort of successful model that we've seen is sort of the slow rollout of of it kind of one step at a time uh, just to sort of get that buy in as opposed to, you know, people are you find that people are afraid of change. Uh, it's sort of a natural human instinct to, to worry about, well, how is this going to affect me? Uh, and once you can show that it actually makes things easier and better and more transparent, uh, then you, you know, pretty quickly people go from fear to excitement. Patrick? Um, that, that's a tougher question for me to answer just because of the way uh, it evolved here at Ivers and in quick service, we never had tipping. So, you know, there there, there wasn't any uh, uh, concern about things changing. It was just adding to their paycheck. And in full service, we'd already converted over, you know, a decade earlier uh, to doing the tips through the payroll. So there wasn't as much change that they would see on the, on the front end there. Um, uh, you know, it was mostly the, the you know, I think the biggest challenge for us was uh, um, making sure it worked for our accounting team. So they're the ones that we, you know, had to sell on this, that it would be something that would be easier for them and better for them. And and uh, so we involved them from the very beginning, you know, as the from the very first meeting with Tip House, we had our director of accounting, we had our payroll person in on those meetings so they could ask all those questions. And so they could feel comfortable um, that this would work for them and, it, you know, it wouldn't throw them into a, a, a state of confusion and chaos and 
everything like that. So that was at least for us where the communication part came. How did the transition to Tip House impact your overall operational efficiency and workflow, Patrick? Well, everything that you know we've already talked about, uh, just uh, eliminating all those, all the reconciliation sheets and and the spreadsheets and all the tasks that were being done, um, freeing up the manager's time to actually take care of the restaurant and take care of their guests and their team members. Um, yeah, every everything like that. It just it just uh, you know, it's great when you have something that automates uh, uh, tasks like that and, you know, suddenly saves you hours and hours and hours of time every week. Steve? Uh, similarly, uh, and uh, just a lot of, lot of efficiencies gained, significant time reduction, fewer errors, you know, better reporting, um, you know. And I think, you know, one thing that folks don't think about is reduction of liability and risk uh, in a lot of cases. Um, so that's something that, you know, having a great audit trail down to the penny of where every tip came from, where every tip went to, all of your rules about that, you know, within the employee app itself, there's actually uh, a, a tab in there that shows you exactly what the tip rules are that your restaurant is operating under. So you can't ever say, well, I didn't know what the rules were. It was like, well, did you open the free app that happened to have all of that information available? It kind of cuts off certain you know, uh, arguments about why someone might not know how they were earning their money uh, and things like that. So some liability benefits as well that uh, we don't really uh, talk about much, but is a definite benefit. All right, we have about two more questions here before we get into the audience questions. Uh, Steve, what kind of advice would you give to other restaurant operators considering implementing tip automation for their establishments? Yeah, I mean, it depends on uh, how your operation is is set up in a lot of cases. And, and in general, uh, if you, one of the jokes our, one of our sales guys here at Tip House likes to say is, if you take tips, you have a tip management problem. Uh, and in general, it's pretty much true. Uh, I think lots of folks have ways that they do it today. And um, they've worked for some period of time, in some cases, years or decades. Uh, and that's all great. Um, but the world's shifting uh, in, in this regard, and particular with the increases in minimum wage and a lot of that kind of stuff, the use of tip pools for both front and back of house and all of these things is uh, significantly complicated things. So, you know, I think, you know, if if you're, whether you're a, a single uh, location and, and you're, you're, you're running your restaurant yourself and, you know, you're having to do all these tasks, uh, you know, this will reduce the amount of workload that's on you. Uh, if you're a bigger group that has, you know, uh, a team that is doing it or your managers are doing or that kind of thing, it'll it'll help, you know, uh, simplify their lives and whatnot. Um, so, you know, it's just it's a piece of software that wasn't really needed 10 years ago. Uh, and what's what's been great about it is it's sort of, you know, as it's becoming more and more necessary, um, you know, I think groups are finding that it's making it even easier than they hoped uh, when they when they finally signed up for for the software so that's that's kind of the i guess look at your operations think about how much time you spend on different things you know doing these calculations if you're using a spreadsheet today for any reason at any part of the process then this is this is a tool that will make your life just that little bit easier uh going forward patrick um yeah i think a lot of people don't realize how much time they're spending when it comes to tip tip uh, management and, and and overseeing and administering the tip program it's kind of the same as i mentioned before with the scheduling you don't really you've been doing it so long in that particular way you might not realize that it's it's taking up hours and hours of your day and uh so you know having having something like tip house available um it, it it's it it definitely is going to save you a lot of time and money and heartache and and uh, and so, yeah, it's 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 a great solution to look into. I would say for any restaurant, you know, considering any tech solution, you want to make sure, of course, that it's going to integrate with the the tools that you already have. You know, make sure that it's going to integrate with your POS system and your uh, your your you know, however you whatever you use for payroll. Um, that's an important consideration. And then one other thing that I tend to look for when it comes to any tech company um, is to see if they have anybody on their senior management team who has a restaurant background or has restaurant industry experience. I find that when you have somebody at that level who can help to shape 
the product and shape the guest experience and and you know shape the company culture and because they understand the challenges that come with being in restaurants and they understand the the things that we go through every day and and all the you know everything that comes along with working in the restaurant industry when you have somebody at a senior level who can who can make that uh, impression and 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 you know, move the company forward in a way that is more supportive of the restaurant industry. It's always it's always a benefit because so many tech companies don't get restaurants. They think they get restaurants, but they don't really get them. And uh, so to have somebody like Steve at, at Tip House, I think, is so crucial to um, to, you know, making the experience better for us restaurant operators. All right. Patrick, how do you see the future of tip automation evolving in the restaurant industry and what trends or developments do you anticipate? Well, as Steve touched upon, I think uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, the proliferation of laws regarding tipping and, you know, uh, not even just tipping, but wage transparency and prevention of wage theft, having a tool that provides a clear auditable trail for your, you know, anybody who might be asking whether that's the Office of Labor Standards or the IRS or any other government agency that might be asking for it is, is really, really essential. Um, you know, there's been a lot of discussion on this topic and certainly a few new laws in the Seattle area, Washington State as well, um, regarding wage theft and or prevention of wage theft. And so, um, you know, previously, again, everything was scattered amongst a bunch of computers and on handwritten notes. And now we have everything all together. And so if anybody asks, we can show them exactly how the tips were calculated. And um, I would say also, you know, when we uh, we did, we talked about how our guests kind of moved from paying with cash to paying with credit cards. And I think that's only going to continue being more of a challenge as we get more online payments and more mobile payments. And, and there's going to be less and less cash used in the restaurants. And if you're still doing it the old way, you know, it's, it's almost impossible to pay people out with when you don't have any cash on hand. So having a tool like this makes it, uh, um, you know, just makes it possible to continue tipping. Steve. Um, yeah, so uh, sitting where where I sit now, uh, uh, over at over at Tip House, uh, and seeing kind of the things both that we're working on and that that sort of customers are are asking us for, you know, I, I, I've always kind of said that tips are sort of like the ultimate, uh, you know, guest sentiment check. Like, well, how did how did a guest feel about their experience? And the tip is a, a good representation of that, uh, uh, by and large. Um, and so, you know, I think tipping will, it's going to continue. Uh, it's going to morph and change and, and other things. Um, there's some good questions that I think we'll get to later around uh, use of uh, service charges and, and, and things like that that um, are, are going to continue to, to proliferate. And there's other models like, you know, uh, Fire and Vine and Chad McKay utilizing the commission-based model and some other things. So there's, there's lots of different ways that folks will kind of utilize these different tools to uh, kind of make sure that people get paid fairly and, and, and you know, are keeping in compliance with the laws and all, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and, you know, like I said earlier, 10 years ago, this wasn't a piece of software that was required. And now as you know, more and more agencies look at tips and, and that kind of stuff in particular, and making sure you've got uh, a robust uh, history and backlog and, and all that is going to become even more critical uh, as we as we move forward, like Patrick was saying. So I think, you know, now is a great time to get started. You know, uh, we we track uh, there's a little internal channel we have uh, uh, here at Tip House about um, kind of industry news and what's going on with tipping in different parts of the country and, and things like that. And the reality is almost daily there's a new lawsuit related to tips or a tip pool or something that wasn't being handled correctly by an operator. And we definitely get phone calls from those operators the day after that lawsuit hits, not the day before. <laughs> so, um, and we've all seen it, right? It's been, it's been around Seattle and the walkouts, and lack of transparency and all that kind of stuff. So I think, you know, it's, it's an important thing to get right. It's people's, it's people's money. So I think that's why it's, it's growing as fast as it is right now. All right. Now we're going to get into some audience questions. I'll just let either one of you answer these questions. Um, we have about 25 minutes left. Uh, 
With the expanded use of service charges being seen, are people util utilizing tip house to pay out revenue that went to the restaurant instead of a gratuity or a traditional tip? And do you have any accounts that solely utilize a service charge that goes through the to the restaurant and then paid out through tip house? Uh, so yes, the 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 answer is one hundred percent yes on all that. So any any form of tip, auto gratuity, service charges, ho however you're bringing in that. Uh, that money from the guests, uh, our software will recognize that and be able to allocate it based on the rules that are set uh, uh, that you uh, you allocate. So within the software, you get to determine what it is, how it gets allocated and where it goes. And then you've got the full audit trail of all of that flowing through the restaurant. All right. Over the years, there have been legal issues from the US Department of Labor regarding tip pools with the back of the house sharing tips that were received. What is the current status of this law and how does tip, tip House mitigate this challenge currently, as well as any potential future changes in current law? Uh, yeah, so those are great, uh, all great questions. Um, so one of the benefits of, of working with Tip House is tips is all we think about uh, as a team pretty much all day long. Uh, we've got all kinds of Google alerts set up for any time a law is changing and, and things like that. Like, you know, we, we, we're letting our operators down in California know that on July 1st, they're not allowed to use uh, uh, surcharges and service charges and other things because of a change in the laws down in California. And operators are like, what? I didn't know anything about that. So like we, we we're on top of all of these changes and making sure our operators know what's changing and how they need to sort of adjust the, their their business to meet uh, current requirements and laws and all that kind of stuff. So that's that's one side of it. Um, the, the other piece is that we, um, because of the way the software works, we know that we're gonna calculate it right every time, right? And there's sort of a certain amount of, of consistency that you can count on with us that, you know, again, manual errors, they happen. And so it takes certain risks off the table because uh, we've all heard about the lawsuits and, uh, one one little mistake here or there, and you know we'd love to get to a place where you know one of those attorneys sees that they're you're working with Tip House, and they're like, "Ah, eh, I'm not even going to bother." <laughs> we know that their calculations are right. And I, if I could just add one thing, which is uh, definitely, uh, if you're not a member of the Washington Hospitality Association, it's it's worth joining the Seattle Restaurant Alliance, of which Steve used to be the president. Um, it's worth joining. Um, uh, you know, we're also part of an HR roundtable, so we all kind of alert one another when things change and uh, try and keep up on what's going on. But yeah, there's there are resources out there to help you as a as an operator to keep up on all these changes. And Lord knows there's been a million changes when it comes to tipping over the last few years. But but yeah, there there are resources available if you would like to participate. Yeah, thank you for that, Patrick. We do have a tip pooling toolkit on our mm -hmm. members only site if anybody you do. Is checking that out. <laughs> I've used it many, many, many times. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You mentioned paying out tips daily. How is this handled and does the tax impact the tax impact of these tips on their paychecks get addressed or at least estimated on those payouts? Uh great question, Eric. Um, so yes, the uh Tips are, uh, you know, the earned tip access product, uh, the way it works is once you do the calculations, um, there's a, a button uh, inside the, the platform that you just, you hit. Uh, and within that, it uh, we recommend a reserve amount. So some mm -hmm. restaurants will be 20 or 25%, some restaurants will reserve 50%. Um, and so it'll pay out whatever amount that you set as, as a restaurant. Um, and then the, the balance gets uh, reconciled through payroll uh, on, on the paycheck. So um, all those are, again, we, we make recommendations based on what we see works for, for other groups, but you can do what works best for your group and what you know is a, a, a good situation for, for how your operations work and what your employee base looks like and what typical tax withholdings need to be and all those kinds of uh, fun things. So yes, uh, it can be paid out daily and uh, the restaurant gets to set at what level the payout happens uh, within that. Can Tip House separate credit card tips from other non-cash tips? Uh, correct. Yes. Uh, so each each type of tip uh, is uh, got its own designation within the platform, and so you can set different rules for different streams of 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 um, tips or gratuities, service charges, or uh, whatever 
whatever's coming in, we can differentiate between them and allocate them differently if that's how your rules are, are set up. And we we allocate our tips uh, whether they come in at cash or or you know electronically we allocate them the same so um, a tip house can do that too uh, exactly yep so both both directions and you know let's say your restaurant you want to just you know ig ignore the cash and hand it out to the employees you know because it's a small amount anyways that's something you can do I wouldn't recommend it but you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Can the software be used in a unit that has both QSR for tip distribution based on hours, as well as full service with tip share as distribution basis? Uh, yes, actually. Uh, I think Patrick is doing that today in those in his, his two different restaurant setups, and that's what we were doing at ESR as well. So uh, within both groups, uh, it was uh, the same piece of software was being utilized in a variety of different ways. So if you have different service models or different uh, tip pool structures, even location by location, there can be differences uh, within within your group. Whatever whatever your rules are, the software, you know, as Patrick said, this was restaurant software des designed right by restaurant people, as opposed to a piece of technology designed by a technology person, uh, and so it actually solved the problem of mm -hmm. actual restaurant people. And then the last one, I believe it's clarification. The software is set up to handle tip distribution and service charge fee simultaneously. Yes. So both, uh, yes. again, however, however the money comes in, we can handle them all together or separately or however, however your rules work. Uh, I, for that. Oh, Go ahead. I can give an example, like at our full service restaurants, we, we don't have service charges except for the auto gratuities that come with a large party or a banquet and tip house is able to uh, magically figure that all out so that we don't have to. So, and then, cause then we do the tip share with the rest of, you know, with the regular guests. So. All right. The issue we are seeing with our current software is that it doesn't separate credit card tips from other non-cash tips. So it tries to charge the credit card tip fee to all non-cash tips. If I heard your answer correctly, this is not an issue with Tip House and can be programmed to only charge the fee to actual credit card kit tips. Yes, you can set the rules differently for the different types. So you could, every other rule could be the same. And as the credit card comes in, you could take out, call it 3%, if that's uh, the way you set it up for just the credit cards. And then you could use the exact same set of rules for gift cards or cash or the other types of uh, tips coming in and not not take the 3% reduction on those as well. So it would be, you just have to set up two rules that are identical, one that handles the credit card and takes the 3% out and one that handles everything else and doesn't take the 3% out. So it's flexible based on a rule by rule basis. All right, that's all the questions we have. So I am going to put your information up on the screen. So if anybody has questions later, they can go ahead and reach out to you at LinkedIn. Oh, there is one more question. Does oh. Tip House work with the individual location to determine what the best allocation model would be for that particular business? Uh, absolutely, we make recommendations all, all the time uh, based on what we see other groups doing and you know best practices and what's most successful uh, for, for different, different business models. So if you're setting up your rules uh, or you've got a set of rules and you want to make sure they're, you know, sort of in line with what other people are doing, we can absolutely make those recommendations. And what I'll say about, you know, putting my customer hat back on from my time at ESR again, the level of customer service that Tip House delivers is on par with the level of customer service and hospitality you expect from your teams. Uh, somebody answers the phone when you call. Uh, the chat is not a bot that's just responding to you. It's a human that's actually like, hey, uh, what's the real problem? Let's just hop on the phone and solve this really quick. So we know that this is a payroll item. We know this is people's money. We know it can be stressful to get payroll out on time. So we want to be there and support every single customer through the process. And that starts day one with setting up your rules, making sure it works well, making sure it, it's calculating the same as the way you do it today. So it's a very hands-on white glove onboarding process. And then that support persists uh, into perpetuity because uh, we know that if, if something isn't working right, you need help right now. 
And uh, I will say, having implemented several dozen pieces of software into the re into restaurants that I've owned or run over the last you know uh, dozen or dozen almost fifteen years, uh, good lord, um, the uh, this is hands down the best customer service that I experienced as a as a restaurateur. So um, that that white glove hand holding is something you can expect from us, and you know. I'm not going to ask Patrick to pat me on the back here, but uh, no, hopefully, no, hopefully, I, hopefully that was his experience too. <laughs> I 100% agree. We, uh, we, uh, I was just talking to our director of IT yesterday about this. Um, there are certain technology companies that we work with who have had just a massive drop off in, in, in customer service over the last few years. Um, you know, you get a great rep and you love them. And of course they get promoted into somewhere else. And then, you get this new rep who just isn't as responsive and and we've been having a lot of problems with some of our other tech companies but that is definitely not the case with tip house uh, john has been our, our our rep since the beginning and was incredibly helpful as we tried to kind of figure everything out with quick service and what we should do and you know our, our quick service directors had a you know difference of opinions and he was able to help Kind of provide the best possible path forward and and he's always very responsive when i send an email sometimes i'm like you know i'll send an email at midnight and he'll respond a couple of minutes later and so uh yeah it's it i i can't recommend tip house highly enough all right and if any of our viewers are interested this is the link that we that I will put up along with this video in the description of the video uh, later on today, and you can actually check out some information there. And I believe get a quote. And uh, one thing I'll say, um, because of the partnership between Hip Tip House and the Washington Hospitality Association, all WHA members uh, are eligible uh, for a ten percent discount on the software. So it's uh, a benefit to to WHA members to work through uh, the WHA and, you know, or you can go directly to the Tip House website and, and book yourself a demo, uh, answer some of these other questions or actually see the thing in real time, how the ETA works, how the rule setup works. Our, our team is really, really good at that. So you can book yourself a demo if you want. Um, just let them know that you're a member of WHA and they'll uh, make sure you get your discounts. So. All right. Well, thank you both so much for your time and all this useful information. Uh, again, this will be up on our website later on today. And if you missed anything, you go ahead and check it out. Or if you want to listen to it as a podcast, again, this will be available at the wherever you get your podcasts at Washington Hospitality Industry Podcast. Thank you very much and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.